Today we'll be talking about how to play the tubular bells, here on the Percussion Discussion. First we'll talk about what you use to actually play the tubular bells, and that is a hammer. And of course they're called a hammer because, well, they look like a hammer. Now hammers can come in all kinds of different materials, shapes, and sizes. Here I have a wrapped leather hammer, I have one that's made out of plastic with a felt end on it, and then I have one that's made out of acrylic, again with a moleskin end on it. Now, the reason there are so many different types of hammers is because you want to get different types of articulation and different sounds out of your tubular bells, so essentially every hammer has its place. Now, these three that I just showed you are certainly not exhaustive of what's available to play the tubular bells. Every company kind of has their version, and you can even make your own if you want to. But these are kind of the basic ones that I tend to use when I'm playing uh, tubular bells in the orchestra. Next up, we're going to talk about how to play the tubular bell. So the first thing that you need to know is that there is only one place on a bell that you can actually strike it. And that's at this cap here. There's a rounded edge, and that's where you're going to strike it with the hammer. Don't ever play a tubular bell anywhere lower on the bell because you'll risk denting or even cracking it, which can be an extremely expensive repair. And then often it just doesn't sound good either. So to get the best tone and to avoid any damage, uh, play up on this cap at the very top of the bell. So, when I approach a tubular bell and I play it, what I like to do is get my hammer kind of at a 45 degree angle, and I want to make sure it's going to contact, at a 45 degree angle, that rounded cap at the top, kind of on the edge. So, 45 degree angle. And then when I go to strike it, I'm going to come down, hit it, and I'm going to come up as fast as I possibly can, meaning I'm going to have very quick lift. I don't want the mallet to sit on the bell any longer than it has to, because I don't want it to dampen the bell. I want it to ring freely. So, that's going to look something like this. And again, I'm striking at a 45 degree angle and I'm trying to lift off of the two as fast as I possibly can to let it resonate freely. And here's a better angle so you can see it all close up. The next thing that we can discuss is the actual dampener system on the tubular belts. Now, some brands make them a little differently, but this Deegan set should generally represent how these dampener systems work. And the nice thing about the Deegans is the side is open, so you can actually kind of see how everything's moving on the inside. So, typically, you have kind of three slats of wood here, and they have holes through which the tubular bells go through, and those are lined with felt, and that felt is used to dampen the tubular bells when it comes in contact with the bell itself. Now, these lower and this upper piece of wood don't move at all. They're just there basically as guides for the bell so they don't go flying and clanking on around. It's this middle board that's really going to affect the dampening process of the tubular bells. Now when I press my foot down on the pedal that's on the bottom of this set of tubular bells, it's going to pull this board to the side. And what that's going to do is it's going to take pressure off of all these bells and it's going to let them hang freely and wiggle around essentially and that's going to allow them to vibrate when you do strike one of the bells and then if i left my foot back up off the pedal it's going to move this middle board back to the side which is going to put pressure on this bell and it's going to push the side of this bell into the felt of that upper and lower board which essentially dampens it so again if I push down, the board moves to be in line with the upper and lower board, which allows these tubular bells to hang freely and resonate. And then if I lift my foot back up, it pushes that board back to the side, putting pressure on the tubes and pressing it into the felt, which dampens the tubular bell. Now unfortunately, one of the biggest challenges we face when we're playing tubular bells is simply seeing the conductor. You can't really look through the bells to see a conductor, and then it can also be difficult to see your music because of the angle that you're playing at. Now, the setup that you see before me is basically my compromise system that I use when I'm playing. It's the most comfortable system that I use, so I just kind of wanted to show you uh, so you could try it out and adjust it to make it more comfortable for your playing. But essentially, I have my music stand in front of me, and of course my conductor would also be in front of me, so that means I always have a good sight line between my music and my conductor. Under that, I have a tray table. Um, it's actually just a music stand with a piece of carpet on top of it. Uh, and it lets me put my hammers down uh, or change out hammers when I need to during the piece. And then off at a slight angle are the tubular bells. Uh, I try to keep them at an angle and not in line with this stand, so at least while I'm standing here, I can quickly turn and look at the conductor or quickly turn and look at my music without having to turn my head too far away from the tubular bells. Uh, now, unfortunately, 
Memorization is a very large part of playing tubular bells. If you have a fast passage or a very big passage that you need to be in time with the conductor for, really your best bet is sort of memorizing that music and then laying it on the tubular bells without having to look at your music and solely focusing on the conductor. Additionally, uh, muscle memory is a very big deal. So that way you can continue playing on the tubular bells and keep your passage right. You gotta be familiar with where your hammers need to go. And then you can take a glance at your conductor every once in a while to make sure you are staying in time. Uh, tubular bells are just not an easy instrument to play when it comes to staying in time. Uh, but the more you play it, the more comfortable you'll get, number one, with navigating the tubular bells and also looking at your conductor. Uh, but number two, just feeling comfortable staying in time with them. Thank you for joining me here on the Percussion Discussion. If you have any questions or suggestions related to this video, go ahead and leave them down in the comments section. And if you'd like to see more percussion-related content like this, go ahead and subscribe and I'll have more content out soon. Take care, goodbye.